Hello once again AP Calculus students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are now at our finale video, video number six, featuring example six from topic 3.3, finding the derivative of an inverse. And despite what my Bitmoji looks like, I'm still loving this shortcut because it's a really great way to get into the problem, take that derivative, and get right out of the question. And so we're going to be looking at a very common kind of problem dealing with a table of values. And it's very likely that this could be the kind of question that you see on the AP exam. Uh, your teachers have access to these international practice exams that we tend to give you in the classroom. And because these problems have been showing up on those particular exams, it's kind of indicative of the fact that they could be showing up on the actual operational exam that you all take as a multiple choice problem. So let's jump right into this. What I've gone ahead and done is I've recopied and pasted in the actual uh, derivative formula over here to the left in that um, sort of salmon colored box. And the question reads, selected values of a strictly monotonic function g of x and its derivative g prime are shown in the table. The idea of a function being monotonic just simply means that it's well behaved. It's, it's not going to both increase and decrease, which means it's going to be one to one. It's going to pass the horizontal on a line test. Basically, all that means is that this function's got an inverse. And if we didn't use that language, then the problem would have some flaws right from the very beginning. So we've got this table of values. And in our part A, we're asked to find g inverse's derivative at 1. So if you notice that we have changed the name of the function, it's no longer a Frank, it's a George, but that's OK. We'll just use this correct notation. And basically, if we just start to write what it is that we're finding. g inverse prime of 1 by this definition is 1 over g prime evaluated at g inverse of 1. Now, if you're kind of wondering, well, whoa, where does this formula come from? It's probably likely that maybe you haven't seen what some of my uh, earlier videos that, that, that introduced this idea. So I certainly um, uh, encourage you to check out uh, the examples probably I'd say two, three, four do a really good job of, 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 of getting into this particular former over the series of those uh, videos. Now there's one little bit of a trick involved here now to finish this problem up. We know that we have a numerator of one and a denominator that's going to consist of g prime of something, but we're going to have to figure out what is this g inverse of one. And this is where kids can very oftentimes run into trouble. Notice that g inverse of 1 is not something that you can readily find throughout a row. There is no g inverse row, in other words. So a student would have to understand that this x value of 1 is not so much the value of x for this inverse. It's a value of x for the original function. So what that means is I would have to search out the g of x row, find the one there, and then the output would actually be this particular x. So I'm looking for the output that's going to take the place of this g inverse value. Remember, they've traded places, essentially. What was an x is now a y and vice versa. So you're going to use this value of x, which is negative 1, to answer that question g inverse of 1. And then to find g prime of negative 1, we just simply read the table as we normally would. We notice that negative 1 fifth is that denominator, and we can easily simplify that if we so chose to get negative 5. And that's really all there is to it. I would encourage you to maybe pause the video, see if you can work through part B on your own. Just take about oh, 30 seconds to a minute maybe, and, and then resume the video and check your results. All right, let's see what we got here. For g inverse prime of negative 3, well, we're going to go ahead and set the stage by just basically writing out what we're supposed to do. We know that that's equivalent to 1 over g prime evaluated at g inverse of negative 3. Then we go after the g inverse of negative 3. That seems to be our main goal initially. So again, I'm going to erase this uh, marking in the table so it doesn't confuse us. We have to look for an x value of negative, uh, I'm sorry, a y value of negative 3. And that 
brings up a good point. Notice in both examples A and B, it was tricky because you had 1 appearing in both rows and you have negative 3 appearing in both rows. And it's very likely that that mistake is going to be manifested in one of the incorrect or distractor multiple choice answer options. So you have to really be on top of your game and know that we got to get that x value. The x value is what we want because this is a g inverse function, an inverse function, so we change the x for the y. So this is going to end up being a 4. And then we can just jump right down to that particular prime value at 4. And of course, that answer is negative 2. And so you could write this as negative 1 over 2, 1 over negative 2, or you could float the negative out in front. It really doesn't matter as long as your answer is negative. And by and large, if a student is very comfortable with this concept, the problems don't differ. They don't vary a whole lot. It's possible that you could encounter a problem that might have the information presented in, in the way of a table and a graph, or maybe just a graph. So you have to be kind of uh, on your toes for that as well. But the general idea is always going to be the same. You're going to find the, the formula and, and assemble it, and then you're going to find that inner function, that, that, that inverse of that function, evaluate it at the given x, and then evaluate that at the derivative of the outer function. All right, I hope that uh, this seemed to help and uh, wraps up our topic 3.3 video series. We're going to move on to topic 3.4 after this, finding the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions. We definitely hope you stick around for those, and we'll see you next time.